Hi, welcome to Pathways to Chemistry. This is Dr. O'Connor. Today we're going to do some simple conversions. We're going to be converting uh, from inches to centimeters, milligrams to grams, and pounds to grams. So these are simple one-step conversions. Remember, in order to convert from one unit to another, we need equivalences. We need to know a correct equivalence. So in this case here, let's start with number one. We want to convert 25 inches to centimeters. So I need an equivalence. You know, can I think of an equivalence between inches and centimeters? Well, yes. I know that one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. So now that I have my equivalence, I can write out two conversion factors. One inch is 2.54 centimeters or 2.54 centimeters to one inch. Okay. And, you know, before we uh, finish this problem, let me, um, let me go back a minute here. So, first thing you want to do anytime you're doing one of these problems, figure out what you're given. In this case, it's 25 inches. And then determine your desired unit, which is centimeters. And then what you do is you write out what we call a roadmap. So, I'll start off with the inches in this case. So, do I know an equivalence that will get me from inches to centimeters, okay? In some cases, you have to come up with two or even more equivalences. So, you'd have more than one set of conversion factors. But in this case, I did have an equivalence for inches to centimeters. So, notice there's one arrow here. So, for the one arrow, I have one set of conversion factors. So, one arrow has one equivalence, okay? because I'm able to go directly from inches to centimeters, and then for each equivalence, we can write two conversion factors. So let's go ahead and do the problem. All right, so let's start off with what I'm given. I have 25 inches. I want to convert that to centimeters. The whole idea is I want to cancel out inches and be left with centimeters. The only way I can do that is if I use conversion factor number two. So 2.54 centimeters to one inch. Inches cancel. And let's see, I end up with 25 times 2.54, 63.5 centimeters. Now, notice I only have uh, two significant figures here, so I'm going to have to round this up. So this is going to be 64 centimeters, okay? So the whole idea is, again, you come up with your equivalents or equivalences. In this case, we're only going to do one-step conversions. And write your conversion factors and then set up your problem. Now, here we have 250 milligrams to grams. Notice the decimal point here. That just indicates that I have three significant figures. Remember, we have the zero at the end of the number. So if I didn't have the decimal point here, then I could only say for certain that there are two significant figures here. But the decimal point indicates there are three significant figures. So let's go ahead. We're, um, our given unit here is milligrams, and our desired unit then is grams. So I am going from grams to, or I'm sorry, milligrams to grams. Okay? Can I do that? Well, yeah, because the equivalence I know that there are 1,000 milligrams in one gram. So that's going to allow me to go directly from milligrams to grams. So I can write out my conversion factors now. Or 1 gram to 1,000 milligrams. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead then and start with what I'm given. So I have 250 milligrams. Always include your units in these problems. If you don't, you're not going to be able to see if things are canceling correctly, and so you're just introducing more error into your results. Okay, so to, do I use conversion factor 1 or 2? Again, I want to cancel out milligrams and end up in grams, so I'm going to use this one. So 1 gram to 1,000 milligrams. Milligrams cancel out, and I end up with 0.25 grams. Remember, in this case, all we really did, we're converting from milligrams to grams, so all we do is divide by 1,000. If we would have been converting from grams to milligrams, we would have multiplied by 1,000. 
But when you first start out, you should write down all of these steps. Go through all the steps. And then once you get used to solving problems, you won't have to write all of this out. But to start, I would highly, strongly recommend you do that um, because that way you, you shouldn't go wrong and you'll start to understand um, what you're doing. Okay, here we're going from 13.2 pounds to grams. So my given is 13.2 pounds, my desired unit grams. <clears throat> and can I think of an equivalence? Can I go from pounds to grams? Yeah, I know there are 454 grams in one pound. Nice. So my roadmap then, I'm going from pounds to grams. I have one equivalence here. So I can write out my conversion factors or one pound, it's 454 grams, good. And then I set up my problem, so I have 13.2 pounds. And again, I wanna cancel out pounds, so I'm gonna to have to use number one here. So that's 454 grams, 454 grams, or one pound, pounds cancel. Okay, and I'm left in grams, so that's 13.2 times 454, that's going to be 5,992.8 grams. I have three significant figures here, so I have to uh, make sure that this is three significant figures. How do I do that? I'm going to write my answer in scientific notation. First, let me do that. So I just move my decimal point one two, three. So I'm going to have 5.9928 times 10 to the third grams. And that is rounded to 5.99 times 10 to the third grams. Now we have the correct number of significant figures in the answer. We have three significant figures.